in an attempt to gain an understanding of how social workers perceive their work-life balance, Dr. Sandra Bridell from Stellenbosch interviewed several of these workers and managers in the field. Her findings reveal that more than half of the social workers who participated in her study wanted to quit their jobs within the first five years, mainly due to deteriorating working conditions. Dr. Bridell joins us now to expand on her findings. Thank you very much for your time this morning. Maybe let's start with um, a basic definition of a social worker. How would, how would you characterize it and also why did you embark on this fact-finding mission? Um, social workers, um, the, the profession is characterized by pressure and stress. And so I think um, lots of people don't really understand the profession um, and what social workers are actually doing in the field. What do social workers do? Social workers are rendering a service um, that's much needed in, in the community um, with individuals, with groups um, and in the communities by using different theories um, and also then link to the different needs that exist in those areas. Um, there's a really a big shortage of social workers um, in South Africa, in Africa. Um, and um, some of those um, reasons um, or aspects that you earlier mentioned um, makes out to be um, one of those things that social workers um, don't really stay long in the field. They really suffer uh, because of the pressure and the stress in, in the profession. Um, it really actually makes sense why social workers um, then also struggle with emotional exhaustion um, and those um, um, symptoms then can lead to burnout and eventually in, in turn, turn over when they leave the profession or leaving their jobs, um, which then actually um, also leads to another situation where if the social worker then leaves the organization or the profession for that matter, it leaves the other colleagues um, to take up also that workload. So being overloaded with, with a high, t um, high workload already and they need to take on someone else's workload as well um, it's really um, quite a challenge mm. so not only is uh, our social workers exposed to to the clients troublesome situations um, but they are exposed to to many other things like um, unconstructive ways of supervision um, high caseloads as i explained poor working conditions um, limited resources and very unfair remuneration and very poor salaries, just yeah. to name a few. In your study, you found out that um, the social workers you spoke to, they wanted to quit their jobs within the first five years because of the deteriorating working conditions that you cited. Were these social workers in the public sector? Um, and they work for different organizations. Um, so it is actually... Um, a, a big problem all over, not just for a certain um, type of organization. Yeah, so um, they work for, for different organizations. Is there evidence to suggest that um, you spoke about the importance of social workers and the work that they do? Is there evidence to suggest that what we are seeing in the country in terms of um, what some would argue is the breakdown in what our social being uh, is as a result of this very important profession uh, breaking down itself? Yeah, unfortunately, um, because of the um, type of prob problems that, that they deal with, the nature of their work, um, which is then linked to poverty, unemployment, um, and, and the declining of the economic growth, um, which was just exacerbated by the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, it does influence the social workers and specifically the well-being thereof. Um, so they now also tend to, within the first five years, we find that there's a trend of social workers moving between organizations. So if it gets very difficult at this organization to deal with the workload or the type of work, then they move to another organization, hoping that that could be better. Um, or they then leave the profession, or they leave the job for another type of job. 
So um, yeah, so well-being is extremely important, and the only way that it's really possible to speak to these needs um, is if social workers' uh, well-being is uh, well-being is maintained, provided an effective work-life balance is in place. And so, if we speak about the work-life balance, I'm I'm not sure. Can I go there? Yeah, and sure. Just explain please. a bit about that. Um, the work-life balance is um, in functions in two domains, the work domain and the life or the family domain. So if a social worker then experiences stress, uh, frustration, and negative experiences in the work um, domain, it spills over to the family domain, which means that um, it, there, there is an effect, a ripple effect of that emotions, of that experience. All of us um, has a work. We, we, we're a social worker and we've got certain roles in the workplace. But if we go home, we've got different roles. We might be a mother, a spouse, a granny, or whatever. And so these also roles there that you need to fulfill. So it does impact those roles. It um, impacts the relationships in the family, in the, in the life uh, domain. Um, yeah, so it's extremely important. Then another thing that we don't really think of is um, that social workers' well-being is actually influenced by eight dimensions of wellness, and maybe you've heard about that, uh, but that was also part of the study. So uh, those eight dimensions um, are the emotional dimension, financial dimension, social dimension, spiritual dimension, occupational dimension, physical dimension, intellectual and environmental dimension. Now, if you look at all of that, um, then you can actually understand why social workers are really struggling in the field. I mean, if we just look at financial mm. with the poor salaries, um, so then they struggle financially at home or in the family life. Yeah, so yeah. this is really a, a, a bad situation. At the yeah, moment. in fact, Dr. Bradal, you in your recommendations, you are calling for the regrading of salaries so social workers um, employed by welfare agencies can get, uh, can get a pay bump. Yeah, unfortunately, with the, with the, with the salaries, um, some of our counterparts earn different kinds of salaries. So these, these not really a standard fixed um, remuneration. These, they tend to be a salary structure within the NGO or the non-governmental organizations and a different one in other organizations. And so really it needs to, um, our council uh, should actually take a firmer stand in advocating for, for the profession and for the regrading of these salaries. Thank you very much, um, Dr. Bedal, for your time this morning.